Hello, hello. I hope we're live. I think I made a typo on the, on the title of the stream, though. I will fix that in a minute. As the title suggests, um, I'm going to attempt an Arch install live. Um, so, the way that I'm going to do this is, first of all, you're going to have to excuse me, because, oh, by the way, I run Arch with i3, and I just bought a new keyboard. It's $20. But it was wireless, and it's a lot quieter than my other keyboard, which when you have a one-year-old, that's a pretty much a plus. However, the only issue that I've had, and if you've run i3 and other, or another tiling window manager, you know that the mod key is everything. Well, on every keyboard I've ever used, every normal keyboard anyway, the mod key is on the left-hand side, or the super key, the Windows key. Um, on this keyboard, whoever designed it had the brilliant idea to put the mod key on the right hand side. And so, I'm getting used to that. Um, so far it's been um, somewhat getting used to because my thumb, my left thumb keeps shooting for the mod key and it's not there where it normally is. Um, but I have to get used to it because I like to have an external keyboard, I like the fact that it's wireless, it got rid of two two wires because it came with the mouse saved me two USB ports and so the way that I'm gonna do this is I have another laptop right here this is a pretty generic um, can everybody see it okay right here pretty generic HP um, it's got a quad core AMD, it's got a 8 gigs of RAM. And the way that I'm going to do this is for the initial boot, I'm going to point the camera at the laptop itself. Um, by the way, is there anybody out there that can confirm if I have audio? Matter of fact, I'll check it now. Just to make sure. And, um,. I'm actually gonna experiment with this. As you can tell, I'm I'm running this um, my video through Jitsi. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I am willing to open this up as an as an open chat while I try to install Arch if it if it cooperates. Um, the the Jitsi and any other web webcam client that I attempt. Um, actually freezes up when I try to move the client to another um, inactive workspace. So that it freezes up. That might be a hint for the people who have been suffering from freezes. Um, however, today what I'm going to try to do is push the audio through OBS. Um, Anyway. OBS. I guess there's going to be a little bit of echo for a second. I'm just anyway. OBS. I guess there's going to be a little bit of echo for. Okay, so we do have audio. I'll just check and make sure we did. Um, okay, so the way that I'm going to do this install is. Okay, if you go to the Arch Wiki. First thing you want to do is you want to download the latest ISO. This gets updated once a month, from what I can tell, um, usually on the first of every month. So um, keep that in mind as you do this. Um, there was one month, I forget which month, that I saw that it took an extra day. It was like a day late, and they update, updated it on the second. 
I forget which month that was, but usually it's on the first. Um, so we'll keep that in mind as we go. Um, the next thing you want to do is create a bootable USB stick, which I've already done. Um, but an easy way to do it is, let's see, I store all my ISOs in a folder called Random Operating Systems. Hit LS. I'm still getting used to this keyboard, so um, yeah, just bear with me. Um, but anyway, um, as you can tell, I have a whole host of ISOs here. I don't know what I'm doing with all of them, but um, I'm a bit of a distro tester. Um, I like to try out different distros, like not on my main system. I'm not a distro hopper. I am a distro tester, though. Um, I like to see what other people are up to, but not on my main system. It's always, un un if unless Arch Spurs like, completely scorns me in some way or another, but. Um, it works, and mainly it works with my NVIDIA Optimus, which that's a big plus for me. Um, anyway, what you want to do is use the DD tool, or if you have Etcher, you can use Etcher. Um, any any application that will create a bootable USB stick, but for me, the command line um, DD, which some people say stands for a disk destroyer, works perfectly fine. You want to make sure you hit the IF equals or you know, start BS equals one megabyte. IF stands for input file. You want to make sure to hit the correct ISO. And for me, because I have two internal hard drives, right, let me hit enter. No, no, not like that. Okay, if you hit LSB OK on my system, you'll see that there's like a million snap Ds, but I. Uh, yeah, don't ask me how that happened. I installed SnapD and apparently it took a bunch of dependencies with it. And I can't for the life of me get rid of these things. Ignore that. Um, the first disk here is um, SDA. That's my um, where my operating system is stored and my root directory is on. Um, if you go down, there's SDB1, which is where my home directory is mounted to. Yes, I have two two separate hard drives in this ThinkPad. Um, I just I just connected my um, USB stick, so we'll run the command again. It says LSB OK. Um, we got still got the first two, but you see there's a third one that says SDC. Um, that's the flash drive, or that's my flash drive anyway. And um, you want to make sure you get the right flash drive. You don't want to wipe your disk. You don't want to wipe your hard drive. I know I had to fight the urge because my past two laptops only had one hard drive. I had to fight the urge to to wipe SDB2 <laughs> or SDB. Um, but I had to stop myself and say, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. So, but anyway... Um, what you want to do is make sure you, you run as sudo or log in as root or whatever. Um, and bs equals 1. if equals arch linux. of equals the output file. And that's going to be the disk that you want it to burn to. And you hit ampersand ampersand to string together the sync command. And this is how I always create a bootable USB stick and I've never had an issue with it. I learned how to do this as a matter of fact from the Arch Wiki before I got into Arch. Before I even knew what Arch was. Um, this is how I I've always created bootable USB sticks as long as I've known how to do it. But anyway since I've already done that I got the bootable Arch USB stick right here. I'm going to plug it in here. And the way that I'm going to do it is for the first few minutes while it, during the initial boot, I'm going to point the, the webcam at the laptop, my second, my second laptop, so you can see the boot process. Um, once I get everything set up, however, I'm going to SSH or remote into this laptop from the terminal you see on the screen here. And I'm going to run the 
the rest of the install from this terminal here. Um, the reason for this is because, let's face it, Arch is a minimal install, it's a command line install, and there's no easy way to record the installation process. Right, like it's not like some other distro where you can just like record the thing or as you go and it's just not the same thing. And so this is the easiest solution I could come up with. Um, for today's wikis, we are going to be using a combination of the Arch wiki, which matter of fact, let me go back to the Arch installation guide and there's this guy he has it's called the glorious egg roll and he does have a YouTube channel um, this is the guide that got me through when I first got a system with EFI okay up until 2016 all of my systems had nothing but BIOS. I have n I had zero experience with EFI. Um, once I had an EFI system, though, I um, the installation process f was very different. Debian tried to um, make it legacy, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to run EFI, um, not for any particular reason other than like. It was there. I should probably learn what's there to take advantage with it. Um, however, there was no clear, besides this guy, um, Arch Linux installation guys for EFI. Um, also, um, a couple months back at the beginning of this year, I bought a, a ThinkPad um, with NVIDIA specifically NVIDIA Quadro and um, this guy this um, guide here actually helped me to get at least the the NVIDIA drivers installed and to set up the, the proper files that I needed to, 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 to configure in order to get the NVIDIA functioning um, it didn't really help me with the NVIDIA the Optimus it seems like this is more for like somebody with a desktop with NVIDIA card but um I figured out the NVIDIA Optimus afterwards um, through much trial and error but I got it and um, thanks to an application called Op the Optimus Manager in Arch um, and um, that's one of the things that's keeping me on Arch instead of moving to something like Tumbleweed or you know Solus or something like that. I do like rolling releases but I also like to have all my hardware functioning properly as well and I like to have it functioning easily um, but yeah so we're going to be switching between these two guides and the reason for that and I would recommend that people do the same thing is because as you can tell on the arch wiki here you think it's going to be easy because it's such a short wic such a short page however there are v there are very important steps that are a link and they're very easily missed and so that's where it comes in handy to have an up-to-date installation guide like this one because it might not be perfect for your system but there are some steps here that I find are, are essential that you, you that are either not here or you easily missed on the official arch wiki and I'm not saying that's not that's not all there I'm just saying that some of it should be up front while it's kind of taking a back seat 
And so, without further ado, let's try to get this started here. And so, I'm going to I'm going to just make my camera a little bit bigger. I'll, I'll shrink that again. But for now, point it towards towards my laptop. It looks like Jitsi has like a bit of a mirroring effect, huh? I don't know. Maybe trying to make this an open chat was a mistake. But anyway, here we're going to turn it on. I hit F9 to enter into the boot to the boot menu. I'm going to have a boot from the USB stick. I don't know if you guys can see that properly, but okay, here when you get to Arch Linux, this is the UEFI boot. The first UEFI boot menu. You're going to want to pick the first one. This is Arch Linux ISO UEFI CD. So we're going to hit that. And it might take a minute. As you can tell, it's booting up. It's going to automatically put you in the command shell as root. And then you can take it from there. Let me see if I can get it to point at it without. Without moving. Uh, why can't they make a wireless webcam, huh? Wireless Bluetooth webcam so the wire doesn't drag it back. So, anybody? Anybody out there? Okay, so here the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Wi Fi menu to get myself connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, why is it down? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to turn the camera around so no one can see my super secret Wi-Fi password. Not like anybody can do anything with it from like a million eons away, but you never know. So I should be I should be joined by now. I'm going to try pinging c4 archlinux.org and we have connectivity so I'm going to hit pacman this and the other reason I'm doing this is to um, be able to install SSH unless it's already um, oh, it is already installed. CTO start sshd. Now it's active. Okay. And our IP address is. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll give it a shot now. Go ahead and clear this and go home. Clear it again. Again, I'm getting used to this new keyboard. Ah! Okay, here. I think I know how to. Ah, oh, you mean from the webcam? Yeah. Whoops. That was my fault. By the way, hi guys. I'm glad people are stopping in. Um. Yeah. So if anybody is just stopping in, um, I'm going to attempt an Arch install. Um, hang on, which screen? I'm going to be SSH, SSHing in through this terminal here. Um, going to have to set up a password for a root. And restart. Okay, so now it should work. I'm going to hit SSH root at 10.0.0.125. Okie dokie. So now I am remoted in. Uh oh. Maybe I need to use a different terminal. It's giving me some problems here. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use... Ah. If you're just joining in, I, I, I did buy a new keyboard that put the super key on the opposite side of the keyboard. Um, so I am kind of getting used to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I am using a, a Jitsi client for the webcam here. Um, that's going to be a hit or miss. I am willing to open this up to it as an open chat if Jitsi and OBS cooperate. So this is this is partially an experiment here too. <laughs> um, anyway, let's uh, get out of this. We're going to try a different terminal. I got I do have Termite installed. We can maybe try that. Um, I know that's kind of see-through. Can everybody see that okay? Or should I make it a little bit bigger? Can everybody see that, that the text okay on the terminal there? Before I get started, I forgot that I set this up to be like wicked see-through. Uh, Matter of fact, I might be able to change that. If I go termite config, there should be a setting in. Is there no? Oh, I think I remember how I did it now. All these different terminals, all these different ways to set things up. 
I'll make that nine instead. And okay, dokey. So So by the way, as you can tell, I already I do run Arch on my host system. Um however since it is Arch Week, you know, da na da na da na da na <laughs> um I decided to maybe try this over over a live stream, see if this works out. So let's see how this goes when I try to SSH. Give it the password I just set. And if anybody wants to know, all I did on the, the machine I'm installing this on was I set up SSH and I went through the initial boot. Um, what I'm going to do first... Uh-oh. Why is none of this working? Do I not? Um, let me think. What do I got for terminals here? Maybe Q terminal? Okay, here we're gonna try. This is the first thing we're gonna try is this to make sure that it actually works. Oh, goody! A terminal that works. I'm not sure what was going on with those other terminals, honestly. Um, I guess it's all part of the process. But here, let me. And make it a little bit larger here. Everybody see that okay? I can maybe change the text color. Uh, white on black. Now let's go for always go for white on black. It's the clearest thing. I put the i3 bar white on black. White on black for my terminal. I try to make my theme as white on black as possible for GTK too and all that. It's just clearer for me to see things. Um, anyway, here. I'm going to try to send... Anyway, I did have an issue with Jitsi. I might talk about that er later on. But um I noticed that when I um I noticed that when I move it to an inactive um workspace, that's when it freezes. So I don't know if that's something that was going on when other people were having issues with it freezing up on them, if it was like out of focus or something. Well maybe that's something to look into. Um Anyway, you didn't come here to see me ramble on. You came here to s to watch me fumble around an arch install. Um, if you're just joining me, we're going to be switching between two guides here: the um, the official arch wiki. I'm going to be going through that, and there's this guy right here. It's, he's called the Glorious Egg Roll, and he's the this is the guy that got me through my first UEFI arch install, and when I first got my NVIDIA card, my or my NVIDIA Optimus laptop here, that was a pain. So we're going to be looking through both of these because I do feel like while the ArchWiki is incredible, it is um, sometimes either a little unclear on certain things and it puts things as easily missable links that should be front and center 
really. Uh, other guides do put those things front and center, so that's that's why we're going to be swap switching between these two. So just so I, m I make sure I don't miss a beat. Um, anyway, so let's get into it. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to format the drives. And um, by the way, the way I got my arch the the system over here on my network through Wi-Fi was I ran a command called Wi-Fi menu and all it does is it it'll scan for networks give you a, options as to which ones to join and since I already joined I'm not going to mess with that because that will kill my, S, my, secu my SSH so yes I did say by the way <laughs> um, yeah so matter of fact unless someone wants to try to join this um, I might just kill the Jitsi because like, I don't know if I honestly don't know if it's gonna work out um, but anyway the first things first we're gonna tr we're gonna partition the drives ping w that we already did that make sure you have kind of internet connectivity this is there's this little step here that you can run this command here efi var tac l and what that's gonna do is that's gonna um, verify if you have a EFI system or not. Hi Eric, how you doing? Um, I decided to, to torture myself live today. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, now if you if you had a BIOS system, if you put it into BIOS you would get nothing here. Okay so the fact that I have things here tells me that I'm on an EFI system. So that means we gotta follow the, the you know the steps to um, to get it bootable on a UEFI system. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna LSBLK to see what kind of what we have for disks, right? LSBLK, and the disk we're gonna be installing it on is SDA SDA here. Um, the next thing I do is something just to make sure that it's all clear. It's called G disk, and what I do is I hit X for the advanced system, the advanced options or whatever, and um, then I hit Z for zap. Keep in mind this is going to wipe everything, including your your boot um, sector or whatever on it. You hit Y, Y, and now the the disk is completely wiped. And that that to me is like, in my experience, that's the most surefire way to make sure that it's good that it happens. So I'm going to go back. And to partition the disk, we're going to use a tool called CG Disk. And there are many ways you could partition a disk. However, I want to do it in such a way that will allow for EFI. So you're going to get this screen here. It's going to say press any key to continue. So you're going to hit that. I have a terabyte hard drive in there. By the way, I'm not doing this on this machine. I have it on, a, on another machine over here. I've SSH'd into it. And so for this, I'm going to assume that you only want Arch on the system. The first thing you want is a EFI partition. I usually make it one gig. And the reason for that is, you know, you want to have ta space to um, work around if you need to. Um, some people recommend like 500 megabytes or whatever, but like I like to play it safe, make it a gig. Um, right here, when it asks for the code, you're going to want the hex code, you're going to make it EF00. Um, it's not EF02. Um, I guess some guys will say EF002, but it's not. Um, and and I guess that's what he says. I don't know how many of them say that still. Like this was first made in 2017, but I guess this was a real issue for a while. It is EF00. That's what I use for all for all of my installations. So I'll hit enter for that. And I'm going to name that boot. Okay, so now we have an EFI system. The name of the partition is boot. Um, this free space up here, that's always going to be there. There's no way to get rid of that. And it's fine. I, I guess it's supposed to be there. Um, the next system, the next partition we want to make is 
um, a swap partition and by the way this stream has been brought to you by black coffee keeping me awake since midnight um, I'm gonna make this one eight gigabytes because I do have an eight I have eight gigs of RAM on this on the system that I'm installing it to um, on my th on the system where I have 32 gigs of RAM on this my the host system that I'm running now I still gave it an eight gigs of swap but I'm gonna be honest I've not once seen this machine dive into swap so I'm de I'm honestly debating just like pfft, getting rid of it and expanding my home my home folder but um anyway we got eight gigabytes so we're gonna hit that and the code for swap I believe is eight two hundred well check the guide to be sure yep eighty two hundred And we're going to name that swap. And now, when it comes to the home folder, some people like to make one one partition for the root and another partition for the home folder for for your home user. But if you're a new user, if you're not used to dealing with different partitions, it's a lot easier if everything's on one partition. So that that's how I've always done it. Um, just because sometimes I find too that if I'm installing a lot of st a lot of stuff, um, it likes to put the installation files in the root in the root um, section in the root partition. And if you have not a lot of space there, that could fill up quickly too, and you start running into problems. Um, I believe it was OpenSUSE when I first ran into that issue, or maybe it was Fedora. It's one of those distros that automatically makes two separate partitions for that. Um, so I'm going to make this one just one and for this one we can just use up the rest of the disk. Um, the default 8300 is what you need and we're going to name this one home. And this guy does have a, a how-to on how to do it if you're doing two separate partitions. Um, However, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to make it one, one directory. Or maybe I was supposed to name that partition root, I'm not sure. Let me see here. Matter of fact, I'll check to see how I have it set up on this system here. Uh, this cat Etsy, I believe is an Etsy, and this is. Oh yes, the fstab file. All right. I think maybe I was supposed to name that partition root, so we'll do that instead. I'm just gonna just delete that one. We're gonna make this one root. Okay, so that looks right. And I'm going to hit right. It's going to warn you, say this is going to wipe the disk. You want to hit yes. And now quit. And now we're going to we're going to hit LSBLK, make sure everything went out went perfectly. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is make our file systems. So we made the partitions but we haven't made them into file systems yet. 
And so what we want to do is the first partition we, that we want to format is um, your EFI system, which you want it to be VFAT or FAT32. And there are two commands you can run to get this working, either or will do just fine. You can either run this command here, mkfs.fat tac f32 um, dev sda1 in our case. Um, the other command that you can't run is, I think it's mks.vfat without the f32 will get you the same result. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll make it dot v vfat sda1 and so that took that made it a uh, fat32 um, the next one you want to make swap dev sda2 and now we want to put the swap on we're going to turn the swap on and what swap space is is it's actually a, a, a partition on your hard drive that or on your hard disk that can be used as RAM if your RAM starts to fill up or whatever your system can dip into this as like a, a backup um, so like if you're going to use hibernation or like I, I've never actually used hibernation or seen my computer go into hibernation um, and I'm kind of unclear on what it actually is as opposed to regular suspend um, however um, if you have like a 32 gigabytes of RAM like I got in this ThinkPad or like even 16 gigs of RAM you're probably not going to see that system dip into the RAM, into the swap um, but I still make it anyway just because it's recommended um, anyway so we got the swap on and we can check to see if it's using it by running top and as you can tell up here MIB swap you got yeah like like almost like a little more than 8 gigs or 8 megabytes 8,000 megabytes and so that's about 8 gigs of, of RAM or 8 gigs of space total um, here so the next thing we want to do is make our ext and our format our home folder and so with that we're gonna and that's sda3 for me and this one might take a minute just because it is a terabyte So how's everybody doing out there? Have you guys have you guys accepted Arch as your Lord and Savior yet? <laughs> so the next the next step is you want to set up our mirror list. And so the way we're gonna do that Hmm. We'll see how this goes. Some of this stuff is a little bit different. Um, a couple years back, we would have had to do these things. You know, like when this thing was written. Um, run the run the rank mirrors. Basically, what this is is that when you're running Linux, um all of your software everything that, that you're gonna want to install is either gonna be in it's gonna be in these FTP servers known as repositories or repos um, the mirror list is supposed to tell it where to go to find these these packages these these applications or these packages and usually you want to find the closest mirrors physically to you so that you can um, uh, 
so it would be a lot easier um, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna check to see what exactly the mirror list says Um, go to three. It's in Pac Man D. Okay. I wish I could say I was one of those people that can install Arch without a, a guide or a wiki right next to me, but I'm one of those guys who will miss a tiny yet most important step that there is. Okay, see. Here's what I was looking for. Is this, by the way, the cat command is, is short for catalog. So it's basically going to output the contents of that of a text file. Um, so what we can do is we can still run the rank mirrors. That'll take like a few minutes. Um, so we do want to run this copy back up and you want to make a habit of doing this with certain files in case you bork something you just copy the backup right back to the original one and everything goes back to normal once you get the hang of that you can literally tweak whatever you want bork it and fix it again <laughs> and it becomes a lot easier to learn break stuff without having to constantly reinstall your system um, I know I use that with the NeoFetch RC. I've used that with a lot of the config files. Just to just to play with stuff, bork it, and copy it back. It's it, it really does come in handy. Um, but anyway, to make things easier, I'm going to change directories into the etsy pacman.d folder, and you're going to see I hit ls for list, and um, and it gave me the mirror list. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the mirror list to mirror list dot backup. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and by the way, this is my way of taking the arch challenge this week as I see no reason to reinstall it on my host system as it works it's it was a pain in the butt to get a video working I'm not um, ready to go through that again just to say oh look at me I installed Arch this has been this system has been working for me since January when I bought the, this ThinkPad and I finally got the NVIDIA working and everything everything was set it's been up and running since then. So like I really I really don't think that rolling release is as unstable as maybe it once was or as much as the reputations give it. Um I think they took a bad rap for a while, but hey, I like I like the idea of having a of having a, a rolling release. <coughs> Cause guess what? I don't have to reinstall wipe my drive every six months when a new version number comes out. But anyway, so the next thing we're going to do is this command used to come used to come with the arch ISO but I'm guessing they removed that when they stopped commenting out the the repositories and what I mean by that is let's say I, I hit nano mirror list okay Nano is a, like a basic text editor. I, I just basically opened the file in this text editor. Um, basically what they used to do was they used to comment out these servers here. And you would go through and you would uncomment the ones that were in your country or the closest to you or whatever. Um, however, since they stopped commenting them out, <coughs> I'm guessing that's when they pulled rank mirrors out of the... Um, the ISO, but you can still install it. And matter of fact, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna hit Pacman Tac S Y, and all this does is it updates the repositories. And so that's gonna go through. It's 
And apparently we're already up to date, so we're going to hit Pac-Man Tech S to install. And what's the package name again? Pac-Man Tech Contrib. So we're going to hit Pac-Man Contrib. Tech Y to install. And what we're going to do is we're going to run rank mirrors. What this is going to do is it's going to automatically ping every server in the file list. And we're going to output it to the regular mirror list. And basically what I'm doing here is this is rank mirrors tech n for number 6. So it's going to find the 6 fastest mirrors and it's going to um, and the, this forward caret here is basically to um, write it into this file here the mirror list file and so we're just going to automatically have the, the closest mirrors and this could take a few minutes so I'm gonna hit enter um, so yeah while it does its thing how's everybody doing out there Can everybody hear me okay out there? Or? Matter of fact, I'm going to quit out of Jitsi just because I, I really don't know how it's going to work. By the way, I did not do that with OBS right now, turning on the webcam like that. I learned this little keyboard shortcut. Um, I actually might end up having to cut this short. If I do, I will continue this tonight. Maybe after um, after Steve's very own stream. Um, that's a good thing about these installs is you can. I just have to rename this to Part One and Part Two and. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut this short. Um, the baby's crying. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I might catch some of you guys on Steve's stream. Um, like I said, I was kind of bumbling around just because I got this new keyboard here. And um, I'm running i3. Um, they put the super key on the opposite side of the keyboard. And so... Um, yeah, I'm still getting used to that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'll catch you guys later. I'm sorry that I have to cut this short, but um, I'll be back later tonight. Um, hopefully we'll finish this. Um, so have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you guys later. Sorry about the about the confusion.